I'm here today with composer Michael Ippolito. Michael, thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely, happy to be here. So, the first question I'd like to talk about is, how do you take your popcorn? Uh, I guess I would have to say, usually I just do a little bit of salt, otherwise plain popcorn. Mm -hmm. yeah. Classic. Yeah. Kettle Corner Music is our series, and I like to present music in a bit more of a laid-back environment, a bit of a different experience, and one of the things we like to ask is what have been some of your experiences outside of a traditional concert setting? Well, probably one of the most uh, formative musical experiences I had was playing uh, klezmer music. I, I learned to play the accordion and uh, went to a, a really great festival in Germany where I spent all summer kind of learning this instrument I knew nothing about and learning about this music I knew nothing about and um, these kind of jam sessions that would happen in a town square and, you know, late night kind of, you know, what tunes do you know, what tunes do you know, and just that kind of like raucous, uh, you know, free form kind of jam uh, session was, uh, you know, I, I always think of that really fondly. It was a great, great time. How do you think that your interest in folk music and in jazz and other improvisatory traditions affects your music? Um, you know, in, in a kind of counterintuitive way, I find that uh, as a composer, I'm more interested in whatever that category of music is that can't be improvised, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That um, spending a lot of time experimenting with how far we could push an improvised medium and, and really trying to create some sophisticated structure and uh, almost composed sounding improvisations um, for me kind of narrowed the focus of what I wanted to do as a composer. And, and, and I certainly like a lot of composed music that sounds improvisatory, so I'm not knocking it. It's mm -hmm. just, for me, I, I become much more interested in gestures that are very clear and uh, uh, kind of clear lines, uh, unisons, things that are, are unimprovisable, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So, can you tell me about smoke rings? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, smoke rings is, um, this is actually a new version of the piece. It was originally written for... For cellos, right? Uh, for cellos, yeah. that's right, yeah. And... Um, uh, actually, Andrew, the, the cellist uh, in the Ataka Quartet, um, was really interested in the piece. We're doing a recording project next week, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we, we were scheming about how we could get Andrew to record all four uh, cello parts, and it was just going to be kind of a nightmare to mm -hmm. <laughs> record it. So I thought, well, you know, he likes the piece, and I'd really like to put it on the album. Um, so I made a quartet arrangement, mm -hmm. and this will actually be the first performance of that oh, uh, that's version great. of it. So yeah, oh, wow. it'll be a um, nice kind of premiere. and. Uh, yeah, and the, the original piece was inspired by this really weird song by Solage, a late Middle Ages composer, mm -hmm. and uh, it's called Fumo Fume, which kind of, the, the text is very weird, but it, it roughly means something like the smoky one smokes smokily or something mm -hmm. along those lines. And uh, it's just meant to be kind of a, almost a parody on deliberately obscure poetry, overly complicated um, um, but I was just really drawn to the, uh, you know, non-tonally related chords, but they're very simple. They're major and minor triads. They just don't make any sense following one another, but the mm -hmm. voice leading is very simple. Mm -hmm. um, somehow that just got me kind of started. And, um, the piece has a little bit of a quotation, just a couple of chords from the original song, but, um, but uh, it was mostly the idea, I guess, the way the mm -hmm. piece moved that kind of got me going. Um, <laughs> and you have other pieces that that draw from, like, medieval... Yeah, yeah, I have, I, I don't know, this is something that's kind of become a recent interest of mine. I'm reading this really interesting book called A Distant Mirror mm -hmm. by Barbara Tuckman, and um, uh, it, it's a really in-depth history of the 14th century, and um, I, I suppose it shouldn't come as any surprise, but our, our stereotype of the Middle Ages is that it's a very dour, mm -hmm. kind of dark, serious time, um, but they were really just as like goofy and uh, and terrible and you know I mean just you know yeah. <laughs> I mean it, it, again it's kind of silly when you say it uh, but but of course people are the same in all times it's just an era that I didn't I didn't have much more than a superficial mm -hmm. understanding about and the music is wonderful and weird so that's kind of a nice uh, nice touch point that I can <laughs> yeah. find these little examples and then mine them for something cool yeah yeah, yeah. Michael, thanks so much for oh, joining me. Absolutely. It's been, it's been a real fun. pleasure talking. Yeah, yeah, me too. So I'm looking forward to the concert. Yeah, me too. Yeah.
It's good. I like the I like the Parmesan. Oh, good. Tori, should I not say that on camera? <laughs> I can edit around. I like the secret. <laughs> I like the secret ingredient. You can just bleep it out, right? 